Hello, welcome to the Chem 345 live video series. Today we'll be covering thin layer chromatography or TLC, which is a very common technique used to identify and separate compounds. And this technique will be used in your future labs. So in thin layer chromatography, we have two phases. We have the mobile phase, which is in your case gonna be an organic solvent, such as DCM, hexanes, or even ethyl acetate, or even a mixture of these. Now the mobile phase is used to pull your compound through the stationary phase. Now the stationary phase is silicon dioxide. So here outlined in green is your TLC plate coated with silicon dioxide. So if we zoom in, you'll actually have OH groups on the sides of your silicon plate. So because of these OH groups on the surface of your silica, your stationary phase is considered the polar phase. Now the mobile phase is going to be your nonpolar phase, like the organic solvents I mentioned, DCM or hexanes, they are generally nonpolar solvents. So you would m differentiate the uh, mixtures of organic solvents in order to have different separations on your TLC plates. So TLC can be broken down into three steps. We have spotting, development, and visualization. First, we have to spot. So we have to take your compound and dissolve it in a volatile organic solvent, just like DCM or hexanes, and take a capillary tube, which is outlined here in purple, dip it into that solution to get a little bit of your compound, and then you would have to spot it onto the TLC plate. You spot it on the stationary phase, so on the silica layer, and tap it slightly so that you get a nice circle around the cross of where you did your first link. Some common errors are a very small amount of compound, which still won't give you a good reading, or a large amount, which will give you smears when you develop it, or even just missing it entirely. So if you miss the line, then you won't be able to compare it to the other compounds in the same line. So the second part of our TLC is the actual development. So we take a chamber, our TLC chamber, which is outlined here in blue, and we add our mobile phase or our developing solution. Now it's important to cap this chamber and let the solution, your mobile phase, saturate the air inside the chamber so you don't get incorrect readings. So after you spotted your um, spots onto the TLC plate, you add the whole TLC plate into the chamber and place it in just like this. Make sure that your mobile phase is under the line that you drew for your TLC plate so that the capillary reaction that occurs that brings the solutions through the stationary phase will bring your compounds up as well. Now these different compounds can have different RF values, which we'll cover later. And based on the distance they travel, you can tell a lot about their relative polarities. So if your mobile phase is an organic solvent, it is nonpolar, which means your top spot, the one that moved the farthest, will be more nonpolar compared to the rest because of its affinity for the nonpolar mobile phase. Now, if you have a spot that didn't move as far, like this one right here, you would say that it has an affinity for the polar silica phase, the stationary phase. So you can say that this compound is relatively more polar than the ones that moved farther. And lastly, we have visualization. So as your TLC plate is being developed, your mobile phase will move up the TLC plate and when you see the solvent one centimeter from the top make sure to take your TLC plate out and trace a light line with your pencil and that line is going to be considered your solvent front so where the solvent ends. Now organic compounds are often colorless so they can't be seen by the naked eye so you're going to need a UV light which we will have in lab for you. Once you shine a UV light on here you'll actually see dark spots that correspond in different lengths onto the lane for where you spotted your compounds. So make sure to lightly trace the dots under UV light so that when you remove the light, you can still see where your spots are. So the very last part for a TLC is calculating the retention factor. Now the retention factor is shown by this equation where we have the distance traveled by our compound divided by the distance traveled by our solvent. So if we look at our TLC plate, from this origin, we drew a solvent front. So the origin to the solvent front would be your distance traveled by the solvent. And from the origin to the actual spot that you previously traced, 
would be your distance of your compound. So if you divide these two, you will get a number less than one, and that would be considered your RF value. So for example, with our spots right here between one and four, we can calculate the RF values. Let's say spot one has 0 0.8, spot two has an RF value of 0 0.5, spot three, 0 0.8, and again, spot four, 0 0.5. So because spot 1 and 3 have the same RF values, they're most likely to be the same compound. So if lane 1 was your standard compound, meaning one that's already been provided to you, and spot 3 is something you've synthesized, you can definitively say spot 1 and 3 are very similar, if not the same, so you have indeed made your compound. And same goes for spot 2 and spot 4 with an RF value of 0.5. And additionally, we know that spots 1 and 2 are different compounds because they do have different RF values. So your TLC plate can look very different depending on how you actually develop it, visualize it, and stuff like that. So ideally, we would want our TLC plate to look like this, where we have our solvent front one centimeter above the top, and our compounds with a very nice, clear separation between all three with different RF values. Here, if you cut off the solvent to short, making the solvent front down here, you would see a slight downward slope. However, it's still inconclusive. You won't be able to tell if these spots are different or the same. And the same thing goes with if you ran it too long. The solvent front won't, will be all the way at the top, but the compounds will still continue to travel, and all of your compounds will be on top, and you will still not be able to get a solid conclusion. Here, we have many different things wrong. First, if you see something like this, where you have a smear from your origin to wherever the smear stops, that means your compound is too concentrated. So you need to dilute your uh, original solvent sample and then spot it again. So overall, consider the structure of your compounds that you're comparing or separating to see if you will have a larger RF or a smaller RF and be careful to choose an appropriate mobile phase in order to have a distinct separation between your compounds as well as allowing enough time for your compounds to separate. And thank you for watching.